Alrighty. Hi everyone, my name's Aaron McGuire, and today I'm going to talk about every movie I saw at the New York Asian Film Festival 2020 online edition. Woo! And I'm really happy that I got to attend this year because it was all done online and I got to stream all the movies even though I don't live in New York. I ended up getting an all-access pass which allowed me to see all the movies that were available except for the ones that are exclusive to New York. And I ended up seeing 17 movies. And now I'm going to talk about every movie that I saw, ranking them from my least favorite to my very favorite of the festival. If there are any movies in particular you want to hear my thoughts on, I have the time codes in the description. And with that out of the way, let's start off with my number seven. Hellbank Presents Running Ghosts is a Hong Kong horror comedy that stars Wang Yo Nam. I thought that the premise was really creative and it had a lot of potential, but it constantly jumps to completely different genres very sloppily. And jumping from different genres isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just that it doesn't pull off any of these genres successfully. It's not a funny comedy, it's not a scary horror movie, the romance feels very weak and predictable, and the drama is so cheesy and it left absolutely no impact on me. I did enjoy the premise and I do think there are some creative moments throughout, but the overall experience experience wasn't very satisfying, and I'm giving this one a 4 out of 10. Beneath the Shadow is a Japanese mystery drama that I watched because it stars Ryuhei Matsuda, who was in a lot of great movies. And though I really like the cinematography and performances, the story definitely feels way too long, running at over two hours. It starts off mysterious and intriguing, but it felt like it really built up to nothing. 30, 40, 45 minutes of this movie could have easily been cut out, but again, the cinematography and performances are really what keep it together. Uh, 4 out of 10. Unleashed is a Hong Kong martial arts movie with fight scenes choreographed by Chris Collins. And this movie does succeed at what it's going for. It's a dumb, fun martial arts movie. It's incredibly cheesy, nonsensical, overly dramatic. It also feels incredibly dated even though it came out within the last year. But it does have some creative fight scenes and a very talented cast. It's great to see Ken Lo in a martial arts movie again as he's one of the most underutilized martial arts actors of all time. But yeah, it's not a great movie in any way and there's definitely far better martial arts movies out there. 4 out of 10! Secret Zoo is a Korean comedy about a man who owns a zoo, but doesn't own any animals. So he pulls together a scheme where he has people dress up in realistic animal costumes to pass off as real animals. And I do think the premise is great for a wacky comedy, but I do feel like this movie should have been a lot more ridiculous than it is. It kind of feels a bit mundane, it takes itself a little bit too seriously, it feels kind of slow, and I wish it did more with its premise. But I did enjoy myself watching it, and I definitely felt it was at least entertaining and cute. 5 out of 10! Garan is a pretty awesome Malaysian martial arts movie with some amazing fight scenes and stunts. There's a two-on-one fight scene towards the end of the movie that's just downright incredible. But I feel like half of the cinematography is beautiful while the other half looks just terrible. Especially scenes that were filmed with GoPros look incredibly amateurish. It also felt like there were no characters or story in this one. I had no idea who the main character was supposed to be until like the last 20 minutes. But if you're looking for an action fix, it definitely works. And it also has some religious themes to give it a bit of substance. Uh, 6 out of 10. Soul is a Malaysian horror movie about a family who is cursed to die at the next full moon. Though this movie feels a bit slow, it's a successfully atmospheric horror movie. It's beautifully shot, it's unnerving, and the ending is pretty great. It was enjoyable and easy to watch, but it's not a terrifying horror movie or one that really stuck with me, except for one mental image that is really, really freaky. But I still really enjoyed myself, and I do think it's a good movie. Uh, 6 out of 10. Baseball Girl is a pretty decent Korean sports movie that sticks really damn close to the sports movie formula, but it's successful in being an inspiring, exciting, and engaging sports movie with likable characters despite its cliches. 7 out of 10. Lucky Chancilla is a Korean drama about a film producer who struggles to find work after a director she works with passes away. This is a very slice of life movie. I love how simple and charming this movie is. And I really love the protagonist's character development. There are some creative decisions in there. There's a character in this movie that I was not expecting at all, but I was very happy to see. So yeah, I definitely recommend this movie if you're a fan of Asian cinema as they make a lot of references to it. And I just had an enjoyable time. I liked the movie and yeah, seven out of 10. Miss Andy is a Taiwanese drama about a transgender woman who struggles to find acceptance by many people in society, including her own family. 
This is a very moving drama, and it really makes you feel a lot of empathy for these characters. There are definitely some very effective scenes in this movie, some of which are very heartwarming and others that are just downright heartbreaking. I do feel like there needed to be a bit more character for the protagonist though. It feels like she's mainly characterized by the tragedies that happened in her life instead of her personality, and I wish that she was developed a bit better. But I still find this movie very affecting, and the ending is definitely going to stick with me for a while. Uh, 7 out of 10. They say nothing stays the same as a Japanese film starring Akira Emoto, and it was easily the best looking film of the entire festival, which isn't surprising because it was shot by Christopher Doyle, who's famous for working with Wong Kar Wai. The cinematography and overall atmosphere are definitely what make this movie special. However, I do feel it's a bit long, and I definitely feel like it's more of a sensory experience than an emotional experience. If that makes any sense. I don't feel like I was connected to the characters that much, but it is an incredible breathtaking movie and it completely sucks you into the environment that it's in. It just makes you feel like you're floating there on the river and spending time with these characters and I thought it was pretty awesome. 7 out of 10. <laughs> Forgiven Children is a Japanese film about a child who kills another child but ends up getting away with it in court, and the film follows his life after these events. As you can probably tell, this is a very disturbing movie. There are definitely some flaws for me though, I kinda hated some of the editing, there are some overly dramatic scenes, some of the characters were incredibly annoying, and it's kinda preachy with its anti-bullying message, and I definitely wasn't satisfied with the ending. However, it is a beautifully shot and anxiety-inducing film with a lot of purposeful cinematography and great performances. It's an incredibly brutal and unpleasant nightmare of a movie, but that's kind of the point. 7 out of 10. And speaking of brutal and unpleasant... From Miyamoto to You is a Japanese film based off a manga of the same name, and it's probably the most angry movie I've seen in a while. There's so much screaming in this movie, and everyone feels so angry all the time. It's an incredibly disturbing, uncomfortable, and infuriating movie. The performances are incredibly over the top, and the story is just crazy crazy and told in a non-linear fashion. It's a very unconventional movie with some scenes that are incredibly disturbing and other scenes that are really sweet and remind you what it's like to fall in love. And there is a fight scene at the end which is one of the most visceral, brutal, and cathartic fight scenes of all time. It was freaking awesome. So yeah, it definitely is a mixed bag. I definitely have a lot of mixed feelings about it, but I overall really enjoyed it. And it's definitely a very unique movie to say the least. And I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10. John Denver Trending is a Filipino anti-bullying movie that's just absolutely miserable to watch. It's definitely one of the best reviewed movies of the festival and it's very easy to see why. It's a very effective movie and it has a powerful message to it. The performances are fantastic, including the child actors even, and it presents this sadly common situation in such a realistic way. And it does a great job of getting the message across that you should question and contextualize everything you see on the internet. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? I do definitely have some flaws with it. There are several scenes that feel very repetitive, and there is one scene towards the end of the movie that I think is just absolutely stupid. It's kind of a spoiler, so I'm going to write my thoughts on that scene right now, and it's going to appear for one second. It's not going to appear long enough for you to read it, but it'll appear long enough where if you don't mind spoilers, you can pause on it and read my thoughts. Uh, yeah, I hope that made sense. And three, two, one, spoilers. But this is a powerful movie overall with some excellent performances, and it does a great job of presenting sending its message, and I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10! <laughs> The Girl and the Gun is a Filipino movie with a very strange mix of an upbeat tone with a catchy soundtrack and some incredibly disturbing scenes. The lead performance is brilliant and I love the film's unique structure. The first half of the film focuses on the lead and her revenge story, and the second half of the movie is all about the gun. It's about the creation of the gun and how it passes through many hands before reaching her. It has such a unique idea and it's very engaging. I do think it's very unique and it has a lot of personality, and I just thought it was really great. And I'm giving this one an 8 out out of 10. Hitman Agent June is a Korean action comedy, and it's kind of weird putting the silly action comedy so high on the list, but it feels like this movie was just made for me. Sure, it's silly and the ending is kind of bloated and a bit too long, but I love the film's premise. I love the lead actor who pulls off both comedy and drama very well. It's incredibly funny, it's self-aware, it's bursting with personality and energy. 
The animated sequences are great, the action is well shot and exciting, the storyline is very clever, and I feel like I haven't had this much fun watching a movie in a very long time. Yes, it's definitely fluff and it's not meant to be taken seriously, but I feel like this is exactly what I look for in an action comedy, and I'm giving this one an 8 out of 10. Beast Clawing at Straws is a Korean crime thriller, and it's about a big cast of characters who find a bag of money. The story is told in a non-linear structure, and it seems to be heavily influenced by Quentin Tarantino. It focuses on three seemingly separate stories that have nothing to do with each other, but they all end up coming together by the end of it. It's exciting, it's fun, the storyline is very clever, the characters are all very distinct and unlikable. It's full of surprises, and it's very unpredictable, and it's one of those movies where you think, how could the situation possibly get any worse, and then it gets a whole lot worse. If you're a fan of Quentin Tarantino or maybe some of Guy Ritchie's movies as well, I definitely recommend it. And I'm giving this one an 8 out of 10. And my favorite movie from the New York Asian Film Festival 2020 online edition is... Kim Ji Young, born 1982, is a Korean drama, and it's definitely my favorite of the festival. It's based on a popular book of the same name that became incredibly successful around the world. The film follows a young woman who has recently given birth, and she kind of has these fits where she just kind of acts like a completely different person. And throughout the film, there are many flashbacks that show her experiences with sexism throughout her whole life. And I don't want to go too far into the story because I do feel it's a great movie to watch if you don't know a lot about it going in. It's a very affecting social commentary on the internalized sexism and unfair societal expectations that are put on women, mothers, and wives. And it does so in a way that it doesn't shove any of its messages down your throat. And it really shows how just simple words or phrases or actions can have bad effects on people. It gets its message across brilliantly, while simultaneously being an entertaining drama with terrific performances, a unique story, and I'd love to see it again. And I do feel like this is the easiest movie to recommend in the festival. I think anybody could watch it and really enjoy it, and I'm gonna give this one an 8 out of 10. And that's all the movies that I got to see as part of the New York Asian Film Festival this year. It's not as many as I wanted to see, but I'm really glad I got to attend this year and I got to see a whole bunch of different movies. I do want to quickly thank the people who put this all together. I know there were a lot of challenges getting this film festival ready for this year um, and having to move everything online, but the hard work definitely paid off and I really had a great time and I'm sure a lot of the other patrons had a great time too. And thank you all for watching, thank you for listening, and thank you all for existing. You're all important, you're all loved, and I love you. Mm -hmm. Oh god, and now that the New York Asian Film Festival is done, the New York Film Festival is starting. And I'm gonna try to see and review as many movies as I can. Oh boy, this is gonna be busy. But I hope you all enjoy the reviews coming up. Woo! And now I'm gonna end this video. Goodbye. Goodbye.